Hey YouTube, thought today I'd show you a how-to video on how to set up a saltwater fish tank. Uh, this should hopefully be the most simple, most easy way to set up your first saltwater fish tank or your already many existing saltwater fish tanks, just easier. Um, so what I have right now is just a 20 gallon tank. Uh, I've got a canister filter on the tank, I've got my salt all in it. Um, it's next to my 10 gallon freshwater tank on the side. Oop, that's the wrong way. 10 gallon freshwater setup, and I've got my water dragon. Oh, you can't really see him, can you? Oh, he's kind of hidden. Anyway, um, so it's going to be right at my room. Uh, just something different to watch. This is going to be the venomous fish tank, uh, which I have the scorpion fish, which I showed on the last video. Um, so he's going to be on there with some different venomous kind of fish. Um, so just the basics here. Now, a lot of people complain about one of two things. It's either going to be live sand or live rock. You don't need live sand. Live sand is pretty much sand with bacteria in it, but you kind of have to get that eventually. If you have sand over in your freshwater tank, it's live sand. It's been there for how long it's got bacteria in it. If you've got gravel in your freshwater aquarium and it's been sitting there, it's live gravel. It's got bacteria in it. Um, it's the same concept. You don't need to be buying specific bags of live sand. 30 bucks for a 20 pound bag of sand is just ridiculous. Um, these are things that I like to explain to people so that way they don't make the same mistakes I made with my first saltwater fish tank. Uh, my first saltwater fish tank, I did buy two bags of live sand. I think it cost me about 60 bucks total uh, for two, maybe 20, 30 pound bags which is ridiculous. That's just not how it should be. Um, we were talked into it by whoever worked at the pet shop, and guess what? <laughs> I work at a pet shop. Um, I know all the little retail secrets, but on this one I found it out on my own. I have been using play sand and regular Michigan Lake sand um, all for my hardware stores for the past, what, five years now? Um, three bucks for a 50 pound bag is not too shabby. Um, the brand that I'm using right now on that tank oh, Pavestone, Pavestone Play Sand. Um, it looks good. It's not too thick where you notice all the big granules inside of the sand that you usually see with Play Sand. Um, it's pretty thin for my personal opinion. I've used probably about three different types of Play Sand over the years on different aquariums. Um, and I think this is my favorite. So if you see it, it's $2.98. You can get it like Home Depot, Walmart, whatever you have. It's going to be a hardware store. Um, obviously, 3 bucks sounds a lot better than $30 for a bag of sand. Um, so that's my first option. In my tank, I've probably got about three inches worth of sand in there just because the scorpion fish likes to bury himself sometimes in there. So depending on what you're going to have for stock, you know, think about what you'll have in there. If you've got gobies, jawfish, wrasse, all of them like to dig, bury, or sleep inside of the sand. So having a little bit thicker sand bed is okay. Usually I recommend about an inch to half inch of sand at least if you're not going to have any of those. So or even with them sometimes, even just a half inch to an inch is okay. Three inches just because it's a big uh, scorpion fish. So, um, And of course, if you've got larger fish, you know, if you've got like a dragon wrasse, he's going to want more area to sleep in. So give her a thicker sand bed. Um, so that's your first step there. Live rock now. A lot of people complain about the price of live rock. And yes, it gets expensive. Is it necessary? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I have yet to run a saltwater tank without live rock. But I'll tell you... Um, well, I take that back. I've got one tank that doesn't have live rock in it. It's the 60 gallon tank, but I have two different filters on there. One ranked up to 50 gallons, one ranked up to 75, and a Fosban reactor, which is taking out all my nitrates and phosphates. So I'm kind of cheating with it. I don't have the live rock, but I have a whole bunch of equipment to kind of make up for it. Live rock is your filter. Live rock has bacteria in it to help filter out your fish tank. Technically you could have a whole tank full of live rock at a power head to push around the water and you'd be set. Um, granted, it's not recommended, but it's true. Um, so the live rock is going to help out. The more the merrier, obviously, if you can stick it in like the bottom of your refugium or a sump and add it to the tank, um, it's always good right there, I guess. What I recommend is having at least enough live rock to cover the entire back of the fish tank. Now. Obviously, it gets expensive, and I know it gets expensive. I watched a guy buy, what, 20 pounds and spent 150 bucks, or, or no, 25 pounds, $170. And that's just crazy. <laughs> um, 
So an option that I did recommend to one of my buddies previously who set up a saltwater fish tank. It was his first tank ever. He had not a clue what he was doing. Um, I told him, get a good sized piece of rock, which probably fit about this area right here. So this little piece is live rock. Then try out to get some dead rock. So we got a dead piece of rock right here. Now dead rock is like lace rock or any kind of rock in general that has kind of holes, pores in it. That way it can contain bacteria later on, but has nothing in it right now. Um, they even have live rock that's sold as dead rock because it's just been set out and curated. They have pieces of live rock that are made or handmade, human-made live rock. Um, it all works. As long as you've got that one piece in there, that's all I care about. Because eventually the bacteria on that rock is going to grow and spread, move to the other rocks, and make it all live rock. So instead of spending six bucks a pound, you're spending maybe two bucks, maybe less, maybe even less than six bucks a pound if you find a better deal on live rock. Um, obviously, if you have the resources for you or have it for a cheap price, go ahead. The more live rock, the more uh, the merrier. But uh, if you don't have that option, this is always an option just to go for the dead rock. So one piece of live rock, launch a dead rock, save some money. Good ideas. Both of those are said. You've got your sand now, you've got your rock. Now, um, what I recommend as far as salt is buy in bulk. Um, there's not really a specific name brand salt that I recommend over the other. They're all pretty much the same thing. It's salt. If you want a saltwater aquarium, you're going to add salt to it. And whether or not it's by Instant Ocean or Kent or whatever else is out there, it's all salt. It's going to make you a saltwater fish tank. Um, what I'm using is Instant Ocean's 200 gallon mix. And I'll show you right here. 200 gallons mix, instant ocean. It's a big box. Inside the box comes, oh, I'll show you right here. You got four of these bags. Every bag does 50 gallons. Now, instant ocean also sells 50 gallon bags for about $22. That big box with four of those cost me 45 bucks. $45 versus $22, four times the amount. You do the math. Now, places I don't recommend going for are Petco or PetSmart. I believe they sell the box for about 90 bucks retail. Stupid. Dumb idea. It's I could have bought the same thing for those bags for the same price. Um, what I do recommend is checking out Amazon, Dr. Foster and Smith. Um, I believe they both have the boxes for about 45 to 50 bucks a piece. Um, in the long run, it's going to help you if you've got a 10-gallon tank, a 55-gallon tank. At least you always have salt there if you need it. Um, just something I recommend: spend a little bit to save a little bit, you know. Versus spending 20 bucks on a 50-gallon bag, then having to go back in the next two months or something because you screwed something up or you had to do too many water changes. Um, it's there for you and helps out. And although. I don't have just one 20 gallon tank, I've got a bunch of tanks all spread out around the house. It really helps out me specifically because I've got all these tanks. Just because you have one tank doesn't mean you don't need it. Um, so you've got your salt, what you're going to be mixing is going to be half a cup per gallon. Um, half a cup per gallon is kind of a estimate. Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less. Um, so kind of measure it out. For first timers, I recommend measure it out half a cup per gallon. Get a five gallon pail, add, well, have a cup or five gallons. Um, and then go ahead and to add the water, mix it up, make sure it dissolves pretty good, and then measure it with something you're going to need. That's right, first time I tell you you're going to need it, a hydrometer. This little bugger is called a hydrometer. Now, there's all sorts of different models. Do you have to have a specific hydrometer that looks like this? No. But you obviously have to have a box with this little meter here and a bunch of numbers on the side to tell you what your salinity level is. This is going to measure your salt for you. You add salt to a fish tank, you're going to check this out and see how much salt you have in there. Now, just to show you here, that little range right there is going to be your average level that you want to keep your fish tank at. Uh, 2.4, I think, which is above, is about the average for a reef tank, I think. Um, and then you've got... What is this? 08? 18? That's 18 down there. 18 is about an average for someone who wants to keep their fish tank parasite free. Right in between there where they've got those little dash lines is perfectly fine. You're not going to have it too high or too low with that. Um, when it comes to certain fish though, they are a little bit more touchy to it. If your fish tank is like a 3-2 and you're buying a fish from a 2-2, sometimes it stresses them out, especially shrimp and starfish. They cannot handle that huge switch. So make sure you acclimate them. But that's a whole nother video. We're setting up your fish tank. We're not adding to it yet. Um, so measure out your salt, half a cup per gallon. Um, for me, I literally just pour it into the fish tank and then I fill up it with water and I see how far off I am because I'm already used to it. I've been doing this for the past 10 years. I get it, I look at it, I say, 
That's how much salt I added for the past how many hundreds of times I filled up a saltwater fish tank. That's all I need. Um, but I don't recommend that for people who are doing it first times. For those who have been doing it for how long, you understand where I'm coming from. Um, but just to be safe, pay attention and measure it out. You know, check out, you know, half a cup, half a cup, half a cup. Takes time, but you have to. Um, let it mix up pretty good. What I recommend is doing it inside a five gallon pail because if you add it to your fish tank, sometimes the fish that are in it are going to be burned by the salt that you add directly to the tank. It'll burn your fish, your coral, your bacteria. It's just a bad idea. Mix it beforehand before you add it to your tank. Now, if you're just setting up your tank, obviously it doesn't matter. I've got nothing in there to burn. Doesn't matter. I've got no snails, I've got no fish. So I just added the salt directly to the fish tank, mixed it up a little bit, let the water push it around, and it seems to be doing just fine. Um, so that's your sand, it's your live rock, it's your salt. Filtration. There are so many different options for filtration. Protein skimmers, Fosban reactors, sumps, refugiums, canisters. All of this sounds scary to the average person that sits and looks and goes, there's no way in heck that I'm going to set up a salt or fish tank because of that. You don't have to have any of those things I just named off. For example, all my saltwater tanks are hanging in the back filters. All of them, except for this one. I've been doing it now for the past how many years and haven't had too many issues with it. The only issue that I would have is if you don't have a strong enough filter, you're going to have issues with higher ammonia because you don't have enough bacteria to change it over to your nitrates. And now people are going, what the heck did you just say? What's ammonia? What's nitrates? And you get people who are like that. People are going, I know what that is. What are you talking about? Now there's people like that. And I understand too because it's not really explained. Um, fish. You have a fish inside a fish, uh, fish tank. They secrete ammonia. Comes off of them. They put ammonia into your fish tank. It's just given. You stick a fish inside of a bag, he's going to die eventually because there's too much ammonia in the fish bag. Now, bacteria, which you have inside your filter, inside your sand, or inside your rock, are going to take that ammonia and swap it on over to nitrite. Nitrite is your next level you want. If you're going to test your water and you're looking at those three levels, you're looking at ammonia to be bright yellow, nitrite to be sky blue. If it's anything other than that, you've got a big issue with your aquarium because those two are the biggest killers in the hobby. They're very, very easy to get your levels too high and kill your fish on, especially with salt water. If you don't have enough bacteria in your tank to swap them over, you're going to kill a lot of fish. Finally, you get nitrate. The bacteria is going to swap it on over from nitrite to nitrate. Now, if you have a good steady flow of bacteria, you'll notice you'll add fish food or fish to your tank and your nitrates will go higher, your ammonia sits still, your nitrite sits still. That means A, you've got a good filter, everything's going well, you've got a, um, a good number of movement I guess going on inside of the tank, and B, you've got a good number of bacteria, you've let your tank sit for a good enough amount of time. Now what a lot of people do is they set up their tank in the first day or two, add fish to it, fish die within the next day. The reason behind that is you probably just added fish to a tank without any bacteria and they just kill themselves with ammonia. If you don't have any bacteria in your tank, you're not going to be getting rid of that ammonia. Now your nitrate is your leftover. Everything is going to end up as your nitrate. There's not really anything to take care of that other than the Fosban reactor. That's another bonus. You don't need it. However, you have to do water changes to take out the nitrate. Um, the bacteria in the Fosban reactor eat the nitrate for you. Obviously, there's going to be some byproduct left over. Um, but I recommend it. I've been using it in my 60 gallon tank. I had 40 nitrate, brought it down to 5. Um, really good product. So, Fosban reactor or the aquatic tumbler. Take a look at them. Um, so, as long as you got your bacteria, you got your filter going, you should be fine. Um, hanging the back filter works out just fine. I'm using a canister filter because it was available to me. It was there to use. It does 75 gallons worth of water. That's pretty good. You can have a refugium down to the bottom to grow your macro algae. Um, this algae helps to eat your nitrates that are inside your tank and help keep the tank healthy. Um, supports enough bacteria in it too. Um, protein skimmer takes out all the excess material inside your tank, helps out your nitrates as well. Um, so it's an option to have, but you don't need to have it. I've never used a protein skimmer in the 10 years of keeping saltwater fish tanks, and I've got some beautiful looking saltwater fish tanks right now. Everything's looking perfect, and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so let's see, we really got everything? A heater, keep your tank about 80 degrees, helps out with parasites or any fungal issues. Obviously, if your fish is more of a colder water fish, keep it lower but on average keep about 80 to 82. Um, when it comes to coral, your lighting is obviously going to be way different. You're going to have pretty strong lighting. 
I won't cover that video because it's just starting it. I don't recommend, excuse me, I don't recommend cor Coral for any beginners just because get it going first and then go from there. Um, so for lighting on this tank, I'm just going to do a little, uh, it's like a heat, like a, how do I explain it, a heat fixture or you get like a reptile fixture or a regular kind of clamp on lamp that you get at like a hardware shop or the pet shop. Um, I'll use that with a corkscrew bulb, corkscrew fluorescent bulb because it gives a good more natural lighting to it um, and a certain height with more of a um, current in the water it gives more of a um, shimmer effect down to the bottom of the tank. It looks good. You're not going to have the same shimmer effect with a regular fluorescent bulb that goes across that you usually see in your uh, aquarium hoods. Um, but with LEDs you'll definitely get that. Corkscrews you might and there's other options for light of course but you don't have a specific light that you need for a saltwater fish tank unless you're running coral um, that's a whole nother world though so so you got sand live rock fish tank salt um, and your filter and you should be really set that should be it I expect people to have fish tank set up and going in the next two weeks after this video um, it's just that simple it's not really that difficult at all to get going I probably set this tank up in about a half hour no big deal. I'll add stress zyme to it made by Tetra or API. Um, it'll help add bacteria to give it more of a kickstart. I'll go get some live rock from downstairs from one of the already, um, already established tanks and stick it in there um, just to get, get things going. Um, and that's really about it. So I guess I'll show you the tank here. So obviously I've got some salt sitting down on the bottom yet. Um, no, it shouldn't look like that. <laughs> I just got a little carried away and just added it to the tank. I could have cared less, um, but I'll mix it up and get it moving out of the way so that way it all dissolves inside the tank. But there's my output and there's my input for the canister filter, and I've got it stuck down here. So the Fluval 305, which I had on the 150 downstairs, but after the uh, do-it-yourself filter, I don't really need it anymore. So um, obviously I didn't exactly show you how to do the tank step-by-step -step as far as, you know, what I did as far as mixing the water or adding the filter, but I would not expect that to be too big of a deal. You guys are smart, you should know what to do. <laughs> so, um, mixing up salt inside a bucket of water isn't really that difficult. Obviously, if you're doing half a cup per gallon, it shouldn't really matter. So, but that's really about it. So this is gonna be my new venomous fish tank. I'll get a light on top of it and see how it looks the next couple days. Um, while I'm up here, I guess I'll just show you quick the uh, little 10 gallon freshwater tank we got here. Um, it's got different beta fish in here. Yeah, I know beta fish are aggressive and beat the snout of each other. However, these guys have been leaving each other alone for a good amount of time now. So every now and again, they'll flare up at each other and chase each other out of the way, but that's really about it. So it's my little Indian setup. I've got beta fish, um, baddus, 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 I think. Um, uh, what do we got? Glassfish? Glassfish. Um, and there's like a neon goby in there somewhere too. So there's a little baddus. Oh, that's a terrible glare. Little baddus, little glass fish. There's one other in there, more dominant hidden somewhere. And then you've got one of the betas, who's the more aggressive male, a big blue guy, really beefy looking though. So that's the 10 gallon. Oh, here it comes. There's also a puffer in there that likes to pick at fins. As you can see, his fins are a little ripped up, <laughs> but it doesn't really bug him too much, I guess. So it's all it's all how you view it. And yes, they did have the shorter fins; they're not the longer fin fish. So, but that's my little Indian setup. The water is tinted; it's probably more of an orange because of the driftwood inside of the tank helps lower the pH too. So, um, otherwise, I literally took this glass fish here out of a 10 gallon downstairs, which was perfectly clear perfectly clean, everything's fine in it. He was doing awful. I threw him in here in the first hour. He was all open and doing perfect. I was just amazed by it. So, But he's the big aggressive male. This is the female, which is getting the crap beat out of her because of the male. But otherwise, cool little fish. Um, and then you've got the water dragon cage. I've got two bulbs up there, a UVB and a regular heat bulb, which I think is 100 watt or 150 watt. Um, but he's still in there. I plan on doing a little rainwater system. I'm going to set that up in the top so that way he gets misted every single day at a specific time, so you shall see. But otherwise that's really about it. I also have the crested geckos up here, but my desk is too much of a mess to show. <laughs> I'm actually embarrassed to show it, so um, otherwise Clyde is also in here too with a big tortoise. So 
But that is my saltwater fish tank setup uh, video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Hope you can actually set up a fish tank now and realize it's not too scary. Uh, yeah, it's going to get a little expensive, a little pricey here and there. Um, obviously, you know, this tank and stand were free. I had someone who just didn't want the tank and actually offered to give it to me, and I said, okay, sure, I'll take it. Um, the canister filter was also a donation. Um, someone said, I don't really need it, I don't have a use for it, no one wants to buy it for the right price, you can have it if you want. Um, so when people go, God, I don't want to buy a brand new tank, a new stand, it's very easy to find things for free because you know what? If they're not going to use it, you'll use it, put it to use, you know what you're doing, you want to try something out, you know, it's worth asking people around and seeing how they respond to it, you know. If you get someone to screw up, tell you to screw off, well, obviously it's not the person you want to talk to. <laughs> but there are people out there and, uh, you know, I love it. it. It's great to see. It's nice to see that someone who enjoys the hobby, who is uh, willing to help out someone else who is working on the hobby and obviously enjoys it very well and try and help them kind of expand more with it. So, but that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, comment below. Hopefully I have more videos up soon, and I will see you all next time.